Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at Predator DNC software. Predator DNC supports both Ethernet and RS-232 machines, so therefore we can take care of both of your sending and receiving needs for your old CNC machines and your newer CNC machines. In some cases, CNC machines have both RS-232 and Ethernet. Uh, you would simply just need to select which I.O. input or output you would like to support, whether it's serial or Ethernet. We have the ability to configure your CNC machines, no matter how many they are, up to 4,096 on one piece of software using a PXP file. That PXP file is a configuration file that has all the settings for your RS-232 or your Ethernet-based CNC machines. Predator DNC also supports remote request. Now, remote request is normally only offered to serial-based CNC machines with a full keyboard. This is something that we have the ability to do with what we call a, a load command coming from the CNC machine control. This again is referred to as remote request. We'll see that here in just a minute. I'm gonna be showing you two user interfaces, a more simple uh, getting started user interface, which consists of only two CNC machines, and then later on, another user interface that is the same user interface, only has more CNC machines configured in it, and they're configured with remote request, okay? So let's dig in here. You can see here that I have a CNC programs file folder, and it has a whole bunch of my programs in it. Okay, I can simply click here, and you see over here on my right hand side, I have the ability to come in here and open that file folder, and I could browse for many programs as I want. Okay, I would then follow my instructions that I have here. It says find the file, so I found the file. I would then drag and drop that machine on top of the said machine, and then select send to CNC machine command. Okay, that's pretty simple. This is, this is a non-automated, this is a manual process. This does require an operator to come up, and walk up to the CNC machine, walk up to the PC, and in some cases get this CNC machine control ready first, and then come to the PC, search for the program, and then select that program, drag and drop it, put it over, and then select send, okay? There are multiple ways that you can interface in with the CNC machine and make remote, make requests or to load the program. Predator DNC offers uh, barcode scanning to scan your program in off of a traveler or a job a router. We also offer uh, HMIs to replace those barcode scanners. This is a little bit higher end, a little bit more technical. It's outside of the scope of this demonstration but we do have other mediums and other ways to bring programs in. We also do honor a little bit of uh, program management. And the way we do that is within our send command, meaning our send to CNC machine command, we can come in and we can configure where we want the programs to pull from. It could be a shared drive. It could be a UNC path, okay? Without this CNC programs file folder here, I would have the ability to highlight my CNC machine here, go into send, and then it would bring up a browse and it would be the UNC path here that I would hard code. That way I'm not browsing around into various different directories and file folders to try to find a program. This is kind of your first steps in managing your programs. And you can also use some Windows file permissions uh, to work with that as well, okay? We like to say a program uh, file folder that you would be sending programs from the PC to the CNC machine would be a proven folder, and then going back the other way would be unproven. So we're gonna focus on send to CNC, and we're just going to come in here to show how easy this would be to configure if you wanted to try to do it yourself. You would just browse to, let's say, your computer or your server, your file server, you would then drill down into, in my case, I'm gonna look for a specific location here, and I'm Predator Software, and then I'm gonna to go to my programs, um, and then from there I would end up going into my examples. Sorry, I got lost there a little bit. 
I would end up going into examples and then that would be my UNC path that this specific machine would go to look for its, its programs, okay? Now, we can set default files, we can set default extensions. If you had uh, two different machines that ran the same program and the programs were, or same part, but the programs were a little bit different, here's where you could define a specific extension to be honored by a specific machine and then you could do the excluding and so on. You also have the ability to set up some backup directories, backup extensions, and then the number of backup files. And then down here, we have the ability to set up an error log file. You have to create the file location first, but then what this allows us to do is at the technical support level, we're gonna take more than just a screenshot of the error messages that we receive from the DNC software. And then we're gonna be able to take a look at those, open them up, view through them, sort through them, and find anything that we could use to um, help solve any kind of uh, PSC case that you may have going on. So it's a good idea to request your service technician uh, to create that location if it doesn't already exist or if uh, you see that it hasn't been created, okay? So going back, we have a default directory extension or UNC path that we're gonna utilize for uh, are proven, are proven programs, okay? So we would next through this and we'll go ahead and we would next a little bit more and then we'll finish it, okay? So in this case, I've created a UNC path of where I wanna get my program so I could come in here and I do send to CNC. I'm not gonna bother looking, at, looking into the program. I'm gonna show you that this is the UNC path that I typed in. So I'm gonna go ahead and I can send a program just by coming in here and double clicking on 2D ribs and it'll go ahead and it is gonna make its little loop around and it sent the CNC machine or sent the program to the CNC machine, okay? I would then as the operator need to verify that, that that program was in the program list. I would then select that from the program list, put it into active memory and run the program, all right? The other way that we can do that is we can come in here and we can open up a folder. We can actually create a shortcut um, to that UNC path to where I don't have to hit the send, I don't have to browse, I can actually come in here and if I minimize this and just click on the folder, you can see everything opens up over here on the right and I can open up a program, open up this folder, it'll open up and then it'll show me my dot nc it'll show me all my programs i could click on this one down here click on this one give it just a minute here it's thinking just a little bit it's got to parse through a little bit okay so now i have my 2d ribs dot ncc i can double click on this and highlight this and this is another feature i'm going to show you right here that's kind of a cool feature that i like you, once you have it like this, unlike the other way, you have the ability to kind of give the program a brief look. Look for any notes or anything in the header and you know, make sure that it's the program that you're supposed to be running, okay? The other thing you can do is CNC Editor comes with every seat of the Predator DNC software. So once we have this program highlighted and open in this third window, this big view window down here, we can click on the CNC editor icon, that's this icon, and it'll end up opening up the Predator CNC editor and then you get all the availability of that Predator CNC editor right there at your fingertips. You have the syntax highlighting that's gonna show you all of your in green, it's gonna show your header information, any comments, you've got your G's in blue, your Z's are in red, and then you also have the ability to do processes. Uh, you can reprocess things or add comments, remove comments, um, all different types of things you can do. The other thing that we can do is the math operations. So if there's line items that you need to change or line numbers, I should say, that you need to change, you need to change your feed rates, you need to change um, you know, an X axis, an X move, a Y move, you can do that as well. Um, some of the other things we can do too is we can change our feed rates. So we can apply this to the whole program. We can apply it to one line. You got a wheel here that we can run um, at 100%, 150%, and so on. We can set our options here to a minimum override and a maximum override. Again, these are a little bit more uh, advanced editor uh, features and we'll do a, a 
at our YouTube channel. We'll have uh, CNC Editor uh, web demos available there at a later time if you wanted to take a look at Editor individually, okay? But we're gonna go ahead and cancel out of this. We're gonna say, hey, everything's good here. I'm gonna close out of my CNC Editor and I'm gonna select that program. Everything's good with that program. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down here to my CNC machine that I want to send that to. I simply just have to drag and drop that. Everybody's familiar with how to do that. Onto the name or the number of the CNC machine that I want. It's automatically gonna pop up send, then I'm gonna click send. It's then gonna do a little bit of waiting, and then it's gonna send that file, and we can see here that it went full back around, it made its request, and it sent the program. Operator would then go to the CNC machine control, and again, make sure that that program is in the uh, program list, and then you would select that program from the program list and then run that, all right? So as you can see, it's pretty easy. Uh, Configuration-wise, we took a little bit of a look at that. This is high level again. And um, utilizing a shortcut or a file folder full of all your programs, this is a, a quick way to have access to all your programs. And then again, the other way too is just to simply right-click on the machine and click to send and utilize that UNC path that you've hard-coded in to select from a proven directory as well. The one thing you won't get here is you're just not gonna get the ability to have that preview of the program like you had down here before, all right? So again, this is a manual uh, send, okay? A manual send to the CNC machine. The reverse process is done for a receive. You would select the program off the CNC machine control, come over here to Predator, click Receive. Predator would then wait until you went back to the CNC machine and depress the cycle start button or done a double punch, whatever the process is for punching out a CNC program from your controller is, and then it would appear in the file folder that you designated, okay? So that is, again, that is your manual sending, all right? Okay, and I, I like this as a uh, an option for shops that are a little bit on the smaller side. They don't have, they're not as big. The square footage, you don't have to do a lot of walking around. This works great. The other option is going to be our, uh, our PXP file that has multiple CNC machines um, configured in it. And I call this my sample file. And you can see there's quite a few more CNC machines here, you know, we've got various different names and icons. We've got this little uh, calculator looking thing here. And this room means here that within, if I expand this open, we have some remote request uh, features going on here, all right? So in order for me to show and jump around into some properties here, I'm gonna have to cancel all my remote requests. That's one thing that the Predator DNC software has the ability to do was once the application has opened up, it fires off all the remote requests and opens that up and is listening to each one of your CNC machines that has the remote request configured in it, all right? And again, remote request is normally only supported on your RS-232 machines. There are some instances where we can do some remote request-like things with uh, things like uh, FANUC Focus and MT Connect, but those would be a little bit uh, deeper discussions that we would have uh, in a different demonstration, okay? So today we're just gonna focus on RS-232, all right? So RS-232 and remote request is uh, very specific to the CNC machine control itself, uh, but for the most part, uh, we're either gonna be looking for a old numbered program or we're gonna be looking for a file name, all right? Depending on what type of control you have. And when we do that, when we're setting that up, come in here and our on-site service technician is just gonna come in here and type in the word load. So we're gonna be looking for the word load to be punched out of the CNC machine control and come into DNC, okay? As you can see down here, down if you follow my mouse down here, let me make this a little bit bigger here. You can see that this is the load command that we would potentially be looking for. We'll be looking for a percent sign because it kind of it's gonna kind of double as a program. So this could be like an, an 09999 program within your program um, list, your program memory. And then you would just edit out this uh, O number or the file name right after the load, all right? So what Predator is listening for is the load and then the O number, if it's an O number supported controller or a file name, we're gonna look for that. And where we're gonna look for that is again, is in that UNC path that we hard code in here, all right? Again, like the other one, you know, we would hard code this to a specific um, pr 
proven uh, directory of where we need to get that, uh, that uh, all of those, sorry about that, where we want to get our programs, all right? So uh, our proven directory in my case is our examples. So we hard code that in, okay? And we finish. So when we do a load at the CNC machine control, we edit that program, we punch that program out. And once we punch that program out, we're reading that 012345 program number. And we grab that program number from that designated file location. We grab it and then we send it back down, back through Predator's DNC into the CNC machine control. Okay. And this is I don't have the ability to show how this works because I don't have a remote request, I don't have a CNC machine, but potentially it's gonna work the same way. You do the row, you do the load, you edit that, it punches it out, it gets the program. The operator is standing in front of the CNC machine control the whole time. There's no need to go up to a PC. There's no need to see any of this user interface here. This is all running, this application is running all behind the scenes. Okay, there's no need to see this. So after that remote request has been completed on this said, let's say, Analam Crusader machine, the operator would verify that the program number 012345 is in the machine program list, select that program, and then go ahead and run that. Again, you can have as many machines uh, per software application, uh, 4,096 machines configured. We have the ability to configure each one of these CNC machines individually. They can send and receive programs simultaneously all at the same time and do remote requests and do drip feeding all at the same time if needed, okay? Or if it's just do all remote requests, you can do all remote requests if your CNC machine controls support all of that, all right? We do have various different objects here depending on what type of CNC machine you have. You may have a, a Mazak, you may have some other types of Heidenheins. Uh, we do have uh, a lot of uh, custom objects, or not custom, but uh, specific objects for specific CNC machines. So what we do on these, uh, on, this, on the quoting side is we would need to have a CNC machine list from you. We get that CNC machine list from you. We verify, we qualify it, make sure that you have your serial-based machines, you have your ethernet-based machines, and then we look at hardware uh, uh, solutions for you as well, all right? So what you've seen here today is a high overview of Predator DNC software. I hope you like what you see. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local account executive. You can reach uh, a list of your local account executive at www.predator-software.com. Uh, that would be contact us tab and you're gonna be able to see a list of all of the AEs in your area.